recording. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening once again. Great to be here. Um, if I sound a little down, uh, I've had I had my uh, flu injection or actually the COVID jab on Saturday and it's knocked me on my socks, put it that way. It's really set me back, but uh, I'm a little better today and improving. And let me tell you, I'm grateful that in our great country here in Australia that they make it available, as in the US and many other countries. And I said to my wife, Kylie, I said, honey, it's, you know, I'm not going to complain about being sick for a few days compared to those poor souls that have lost their lives. So uh, I may be suffering a little, but um, it's better than the alternative. And I think we'll all agree with that. So anyway, great to have you all here. So uh, for many of you, we've got some uh, non-members here that are here for the first time uh, attending one of my webinars. I'd like to uh, welcome you. I'll turn the camera off in a minute because I know it compresses the screen. But well, there's a few things I do want to show you uh, um, as we get underway, but I might turn the camera on as we get there. Now, traders, uh, we've got a lot to cover. So one thing I'd like to encourage you to do, if you haven't already, um, oh yeah, <laughs> Mike, I just saw your, your your message there. I know, I know, just about the, the toxic. Let me tell you, sorry, and before we move on, uh, I debated for ages whether or not um, I would have the jab. And um, my concern is because I travel backwards and forwards to the US so often, and I haven't been able to in the last year here in Australia, unless you've had the jab, you're probably not going to be able to travel internationally. So I thought I'd um, I'd roll the dice with it. So Mike, I hear what you're saying there with it. Uh, and and uh, Robert just said the same thing. So uh, it's, it's an interesting debate, which we won't get into <laughs> uh, right now. So what was I going to do? Turn the camera off, but I will turn it back on as we as we cover some things there. So the sign of an intelligent person is how open they are to new ideas. Traders, we're going to be covering a, a lot in this session, and I've called it session one. And the reason I've called it session one, as I started to prepare for this, you know, I realised that we could spend three full days on this. Uh, most of you know I'm a researcher and besides being a trader and I love to study and I've got a massive library and, and what that means is when it comes to the psychology of trading, probably 80 or 90% of what I've got is all about um, uh, psychology of trading. So what we're going to do is break these sessions up and um, so this will be session one, and I don't know how many sessions we'll have. We'll just see how long it takes us to get through the information. Uh, Kimberly, you won't be able to see the chat, but go to webinar, sorry. So I do have to pull up the disclaimer. We all know, even though we're not going to be directly looking at the charts today and talking so much about the setups, but there is a risk in trading. If you're watching the recording, please feel free to pause the recording to read the disclaimer. Uh, a very quick advertisement and then we're out of it. Uh, for those members that are watching, uh, our next coaching class does kick off tomorrow. You can attend for only $97 a month, cancel after one month. That's eight live two-hour coaching sessions a month. I've got a lot of our coaching members. Uh, yes, Mike, I am recording this. So it is being recorded, yes. So only 97 a month, or for our annual members, it's 597 uh, a month. Uh, g'day, Mark. I'll tell you about that tomorrow, my friend. Mark just asked me, how's it going? I won't go into my woes, Mark. <laughs> so 597, which is basically uh, eight live two-hour sessions. Uh, Mark and many of the other members here all attend my coaching. Some of you have been with me for three years in the coaching classes. You're there for a reason, because of the value and what you're learning. So, uh, uh, Raymond, uh, good to have you here, mate, uh, and many other members. So, I won't keep looking at the chat, otherwise we won't get through this. So, um, traders, the links to join will be sent out. We're going to email you the link to the recording. Uh, and uh, what was I was going to talk about the handouts. We'll talk about those uh, in a moment. Now, <laughs> something that um, I just thought I'd look this up. They say that the mind can only absorb what the seat can endure. I actually uh, looked up, I was looking for a little diagram. I come across this and it said basically, lecturers should remember that the capacity of a mind to absorb is limited by what the seat can endure. So 
we'll keep these to sort of maybe an hour to an hour and a half maximum, these sessions. And what I'm looking at is every, we'll run these every fortnight. Uh, for my American friends, uh, fortnight means every second week. We'll run them on a Monday night uh, until we get through all of the material. Now, I'm not going to turn this into a RARA session because we don't have to. Most of you here are already members, but what would it mean to you to be able to earn that extra 500, 1,000 or 10,000 per week? And we talk about this in coaching virtually every day, the earning potential and how to get there. Now, we know that there are literally hundreds of thousands of traders around the world that actually do it, but there's also uh, 20 times more than that that don't do it or don't ever make it. And that's really what this number of seminars or webinars I'm running here is really all about. How do you get to the top? Because what I've discovered, traders, is that 90% of trading really is head stuff. Now, for coaching members here, I am going to go over some of the original material and old material and actually material you see every week. However, repetition is the mother of learning. Now, as I started to put this together, and sorry if I'm sniffing away here, how far down the rabbit hole are you willing to go? My good friend here, he's got in one hand the blue pill. Now, the blue pill means that if you're not serious about your trading, uh, you know, it's okay if you log out halfway through and say, yep, this ain't for me. On the other hand, We've got the red pills. How far are you willing to go? Because it automatically came to me, that is, how far down the rabbit hole am I going to take our members? And we're going to go right down, meaning we're going to cover a lot of things because traders, this is what the psychology of trading, the challenges that you face mentally, is what is holding many of you or most of you back from succeeding. We already know the 34B kicks butt virtually every single day. 2Bs kick butt virtually every single day as well. We've got these high probability trades, yet we fail to take them or we freeze or whatever. So how bad do you want this? So in these webinars, I'm going to be sharing with you a range of ideas and techniques that you can use and which ones you use is really up to you. But really, this is about getting serious from the psychological side because unfortunately, most traders are not willing to take this step. Now, one of the things I do want to say, a little bit like I mentioned about getting this jab, and even though it's made me rather ill, um, I'll get over it in a couple of days, but I'm still grateful and I want you to open your mind of a possibility of living a life of gratitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because what the markets offer us is an incredible opportunity, traders. And when we approach the markets with this, um, uh, with, with really the approach of gratitude, I promise you, things will start to happen for you. And as I said from the start, it's so important you be, at least be open-minded. Now, this copy here I've actually uploaded for you. And let me just show you this now so you all know where to get this. Now, for anyone that's not a member of the Day Traders Fast Track program that may be watching this, if you drop us an email, uh, so you'll have the link. So if you've registered, you'll actually get the link. Uh, drop us an email because I just need to set up a little way where you can download the documents because this is the, the uh, members area. So what I've done, traders, I've opened up a folder here called the Disciplined Trader. Now, this is in the general members area, not in the coaching folder. I may even put it in the coaching folder to make it easy for coaching members as well. But go to the Disciplined Trader folder and you'll see here, for an example, we've got a folder there called Putting Pen to Paper. Some of the exercises and things we're going to be going through shortly. Now, I haven't uploaded all of the folders we're going to be using in this series of webinars. So if you've just logged in, we're going to be, well, I'll be running a number of these every second week uh, because there's just too much material to get through in one session. Uh, 
So what we cover, we, we probably won't get through everything here, but you can come in uh, to uh, this folder and download everything. Now, there is also a little document there called, and actually I shouldn't click on this, it, for some reason it sometimes corrupts, go to webinar and it makes it fall over. So I won't open up any more of these. Um, let me actually turn it off. Um, it's called EaseUS. You can, it's a little um, app you can download free of charge where you can download YouTube videos and soundtracks. It's invaluable because um, we're going to be talking here a lot about giving ourselves that check up from the neck up. For an example, I've got a ton of MP MP3 soundtracks where I've downloaded uh, great videos, um, motivational stuff, good head stuff uh, on trading and personal development, etc. And I've converted them into soundtracks. Now, I've uploaded a ton of these for members, but you can also download those as well. So I really want to encourage you to do that. But anyway, now you know where the, uh, the handouts are. It's called the Discipline Trader Webinar. So this document is also uploaded into the folder called Putting Pen to Paper. Now, what we're going to be covering in these webinars are proven strategies. These are proven. Now, some things, of course, you know, as, as I say all the time, you know, the sign of an intelligent person is how open you are to new ideas. It doesn't mean you don't go and verify the idea, but, but at least be open-minded. Now, we're going to be talking about pen to paper, creating a, a, that is things you need to actually do, creating a compelling future, goal setting, NLP strategies, habits. You know, as we know, tiny habits lead to big habits. And, you know, I would say so much of our trading is really made up of the habits that we've developed. And tiny, just like tiny changes equals remarkable results. Affirmations, visualization, power of questions. Today, I'm hoping we'll get to the power of questions. Mark Douglas uh, takeaway, um, takeaways, um, our daily non-negotiables. And of course, in the end traders, none of these ideas will work if you don't do the work. That is, unfortunately, so many traders are not willing to put pen to paper. They're not willing to undertake these exercises. And I truly want to see your success stories. I love them when you write in and let me know how you go, right? And it, it really it really drives me. It truly does. But you've got to do the work. Now, a lot of these things mean that we need to make changes within ourselves. And as Robin Sharma, Sharma says, you know, change is hard at first, messy in the middle, and glorious at the end. We can do this. We can master the art of trading. It's not rocket science, but we do need to make changes. Now, I do want you to have a pen and notebook handy. Very important, traders, that you take notes. Now, as you know, these sessions are being recorded. So if you can't keep up or something goes over your head, you're able to go back. And I, and I really hope that I give you enough content here and valuable information that you can actually take this away and say, hey, I need to watch this again and again. And as the late Frank Zappa, the great musician said, a mind is like a parachute. It doesn't work if it isn't open. Be open-minded, traders, you know, because these strategies work. Now, when it comes to writing things down, uh, what's been proven is in neuroscience is that we have stronger brain activity after writing things down on paper than, say, typing them on a tablet or smartphone. So actually taking notes, uh, it really starts to seep in the information, and there's a lot of science that supports this. So please take notes. The other thing is too, as I was putting this together and putting slides together, I really thought, you know, there's so many little things here. I'm, I'll bring up a slide and it may not mean much to you initially, but there are many pieces to the puzzle when it comes to trading and the psychology of trading. And I don't know about you, but if you ever put together a jigsaw puzzle and there's a couple of pieces missing and it's really disappointing, well, there are many pieces to the psychology of trading. So I might go through briefly a small piece or bring up a slide and mention it briefly, but it could be a valuable piece.
So I want you to take notice of all of the slides that I bring up, such as this one. Really, what we're covering in these sessions is really only the tip of the iceberg. There's a huge amount of knowledge and information, I suppose, that I, that I won't be covering, and we don't have the time, but is, in, is in, in, available in many good books and online, etc. And I think it was the J, uh, Jim Rowan once said something like, you know, you've got to work harder on yourself and you work harder on your career. That is, he meant work harder on growing yourself personally because we've got to master our psychology and it really means throwing ourselves into it. It's so important. Now, this is where then we get down to this and I know some of you are probably, I've seen all this before, I've attended the webinars or I've seen it or I've re read it, etc. but you're not doing it. If your trading is not where you want it to be, right, we've got to apply, knowledge, heavy knowledge is not good enough. We've got to use that knowledge, put it in place. Now, some of the stuff here that we cover also, <laughs> unpleasant truths, and comforting lies. I love that diagram, the people lining up to the comforting lies um, webinar. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you how it is. And uh, I'm going to try to be, you know, I'm feeling a bit grumpy today because of this damn jab. <laughs> I've got a sore arm as well. However, I'll try to be nice, okay? But the fact is we've got to face the truth, traders, that we're usually letting ourselves down. You know, we tend to head in the direction that we face. And unfortunately, you know, um, what we're focused on or the direction that most of us are focused on or facing is fear. And what happens is we keep walking into that fear and we've got to deal with that, which means we've got to put things in place. We've got to start to really apply ourselves. Now, Let's just talk about time frames for a moment in doing this. Number one, our, my little friend on the right here, to be successful, your focus has got to be so intense that others think you're crazy. Uh, you've got to really apply yourself on this. I know you, most of you already know this. But also, Ray, actually, it brings me up, Raymond, one of our members, uh, sent me an email just before, just before our break, the week before last. Just about talking about, um, it's great to bring up what our income goals can be on the spreadsheet that we have, which we will be talking about. I don't think we'll get to it today. But then he said, he brought up a really valid point. We've also got to talk about the amount of trades that we need to take to get there. And I've been thinking about that. And I actually sent him back um, uh, and said, it's a really good point. To hit our daily targets, it's great with the income goal, but how many trades a day based upon our win-loss ratios do we need to execute? And where that leads with this little thing here, where you are in five years, means that one of the things that I recommend you do is you execute, say, two trades to start with a day, then three, then four, then five. Set yourself realistic targets. And we're going to break that down when we get to the goal setting section, probably in two weeks' time. You need to have realistic targets that are achievable. Because remember the Goldilocks diagram for most of my members, you've seen it, where if you know if it's too hard, we give up. If it's too easy, we say, stuff this. We, we've got to have it just right. Everyone in the room here, and we've got, uh, what is it now, 132 people here so far are different. We all have different requirements. Likewise, when we get to some of the exercises, some will resonate with others, uh, some will resonate with some, others won't. You've got to find something that suits you. Likewise, your goals. But time's going to pass anyway. So what I'm saying is be realistic with a time frame that you're setting for yourself. Now, Richard Feynman, who was a scientist, when he first started out, opened up a notebook of things I don't know about. And I encourage that with my traders now, that you open up a notebook of things that you don't know about. Likewise, as I cover items or topics in my series of webinars here, if you're unsure about it or don't know what a term means, jot it down. That's great. 
You can go back to it, okay? But don't get lost as I go through or get caught up on something. So I really encourage, and it's something I'm really pushing now in my coaching classes because we cover so much. Um, uh, Robert just said, uh, how about time instead of dollars? You take the setups off it. Uh, Robert, you'll probably see I actually do that, and, and that's a really good point, the amount of setups every 15 or 20 minutes, and I might come back to that when we talk about um, targeting, but I actually personally do something like that, and, and let me just cover that, what I mean by that. So Robert just said, how about instead of dollars, such take the setups offered to you in four hours? Now, there is a big difference, traders, between trading the New York session and trading right now. Now, if I, I've turned my charts off just deliberately while I'm running this session because of the alerts and things go off and it slows down the go to webinar sometimes. But if we had a look now, the market's been open one hour, 20 minutes, globex session. We've probably had at least two or three setups in that time. However, an hour and 20 minutes, typically with our day trading in New York, we've probably have had maybe five to 10 good setups. We've got to really, that's right, you've got to be like a sniper. You've got to look for those correct setups. However, we need to change our time frames. But, but let me come back to that. Oops, here we go. Oops, going back here. Let me get catch up here. Now, with a lot of things here, when we go to the exercise sheets in a moment, you solve one problem, you solve many. In other words, we can have the Donomo effect. And we talk regularly about that one thing. And we talk about Curly, and we'll talk about Curly next week out of that um, great movie, City Slickers. But what's that one thing that's holding you back right now? And what I tend to find with traders, there usually is that one thing. Uh, a big one, of course, is fear. And if we look at fear, F-E-A-R, fear stands for false expectations appearing real. However, some people can say, um, uh, well, look, um, <laughs> you know, well, you've got to become fearless. But you know what? We all suffer from fear. We've got to face fear. And I think that's where courage comes into it. Courage is not about the absence of fear. It's about being able to face fear and work our way through that. But we'll come more to that. But what's that one thing that's holding you back? Now, the other thing with that, and with everything I'm going to be talking about in these webinars, and I've got, I'm suspecting we'll have at least four of these, is that really it, it's our thinking, it's our mindset. Now, as Zig Ziglar said, we all need that checkup from the neck up because it's so easy to suffer from what I call the hardening of the attitudes, and it's true. Traders, you know, look, for many of you, you don't have the luxury like I do of being full-time trading, working from home, et cetera. You've got jobs and you don't have that hours a day where you can just go and go down by the beach and sit there and read your goals and your books and things like that. I recognize that. But it's so important that you still lock away time and you start to focus on these things and you work on the head stuff. Now, so many of so many traders that I work with suffer from that stinking thinking because of the past experiences that they've had. Well, the great thing is, traders, we're not goose. Humans are the only living creatures that can live one way for 20 years, wake up one day and say, I'm going to change things. Now, I love what C.S. Lewis says, you, can, you can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. Meaning, traders, you can do this. You truly can. For those that are members, the 34B, the 2Bs, those that trade the uh, uh, the 2 and 3Ds know they kick ass once you get used to them. That's a, that's a divergence trade. But once again, once you're experienced in trading. Now, with the mindset, what do the markets mean to you? An ATM, exciting and fun, or something to be extremely scared of? Now, there's nothing wrong with being cautious of the markets and the way we approach it, because we know it can soon suck your money in as quick as spit it out as well. But we've got to consider our mindset. Now, do you have a growth or fixed mindset? Because if you've got that fixed mindset, 
my webinars and reading most books or, or watching the Mark Douglas videos probably isn't going to help you. Now, Carol Dweck wrote that excellent book, uh, Mindset, Changing the Way You Think to Fulfill Your um, Potential. And as she points out in this book, there's two types of mindset. We've got what we call fixed or growth. Now, the growth-orientated mindset, they don't accept a no. There's got to be a way. How can we do this? What's the best way to approach this? They see learning abilities. They want to become better, become a better trader. They're willing to um, uh, take what I call the black box theory. The black box theory, of course, is what happens with aircraft when they go down. They go back and look at the black box. How can we improve the airline industry so this does not happen again? They accept the consequences of his or her, her work. Um, uh, they don't try to blame others. Where what's rampant in the trading industry is, oh, bullshit, that doesn't work. Oh, that's shit, that won't work. Excuse my language, ladies. Um, but, but it's true. You know, everyone wants to blame someone. They don't want to accept responsibility. They're a higher achiever. They reach their goals. A fixed mindset, they quit easy. Um, no, it won't work. They look for the shortcuts. Um, look, I can give you the shortcuts on the, um, on the trading setup. So when it comes to psychology, I think it's something, you know, this is probably the most difficult um, uh, part of it. Ignores feedback, thinks it's for others, never lives up to his or her potential. So we've got to work on this head stuff. Now, one of the things that holds us back is the psychological damage that's been done to probably 90% of traders. That is, they go and blow their account or they find out it's not as easy as um, uh, they thought it would be or they start revenge trading. In fact, I've uploaded a little document and you know what? I'm not going to go through, through them all with you. You know, learning, uh, trading, learning experiences, uh, errors, mistakes. Now, by the way, these are ones that I've put together from just not me, but other traders. For an example, some guys I was working with uh, that were professional traders. <laughs> uh, I met with them a number of times, in, actually in Chicago. They're not in. They're not members of the room, by the way. For they're not the guys that are currently members, but they uh, openly admitted they're all into cocaine. And I think I've put that down. Uh, drinking alcohol or taking illicit drugs why I'm trading. That's not me, by the way, that this is for you to read. And we could go and spend hours and hours just going through this list. We're all different, but I think that just about every, th every reason we fail is on this list. Hang on a sec, I've just got to go and add another line. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Robert. When you said laughing out loud, I just um, thought I'd bring that up. We're going to come back to that one in a moment. Now, but this is something that's really serious. Um, when we get to next week and we start to, a week after, we start to talk about beliefs, how do we collapse a belief or collapse an anchor? Because this is a real challenge. How many of us in the room uh, freeze when taking a trade or we become paralyzed? And I know there's probably many of you that freeze. We start to doubt what we're doing. We doubt our decision. And I could go on and on with these challenges. And many of this, we can go back to our past, to the shadow of our past, the mistakes we've made in the past. And it's so important we, we learn to deal with it. We've got to learn to leave our past behind. Now, at the same time, we do have to reframe that experience, and a reframe is an NLP technique, which we'll be covering, to say, what can I learn from those experiences? And it's so important that we ask the right questions. What can I learn from these past experiences? Now, what happens is we develop what we call learned helplessness. Now, even though it's strongly tied, as most of you are aware, to animal psychology, it's applied very much when it comes to trading. Many traders give up because they've blown their accounts two or three times because they didn't have the right training or coaching or they didn't get the head stuff right. And that's why I keep saying you can do it, but 
you may have to work on yourself. And this is where a lot of the exercises that we're going to be looking at, you've got to put pen to paper. You've got to do them. Now, I'm not going to stop the session and say, okay, fill this out now because this will be a five-hour session just on some of the documents I'm going to be giving you in a few minutes. And it'll be great if we if we were doing a live seminar uh, or if I was in with a firm, we would actually stop and do it. But um, uh, so it's something for you to do later. However, the point I want to bring up, as the Greeks have said, know thyself on their ancient temples. It's so important we get to know ourselves. Pursuit of self-knowledge. And who am I? Why do I do the things I do? Can I change? Well, the answer is yes. Now, how are we going to do this? How are we going to create change? Because what you've got to do is start to develop the belief in these concepts. Now, Bruce Lipton wrote this excellent book, and I actually bought it um, four or five years ago um, on a referral from the from the late um, uh, uh, oh dear, dear tell him <laughs> I just can't remember his name right now. Anyway, it's about um, uh, he's proven now he's a scientist that you can actually change your DNA, and it's now scientifically proven. It's it's an incredible book. If you've got the chance, go and uh, – no, it wasn't um, uh, Mark Douglas. It was um, – he passed away. He was the, uh, the philosopher um, – oh, fruitcakes. Um, Wayne Dyer, Dr. Wayne Dyer. Sorry, everyone. Uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer. If anyone uh, studied Wayne's uh, book, he, his first book 40 years ago was Your Erroneous Zones. And uh, he went uh, – he – wrote many, many books. And when you read his early material, he was actually almost anti-religion and uh, he become very, very spiritual based. But not that this book, by the way, has got anything to do with spiritual based stuff. It's about beliefs and meditation and and just a lot of consciousness. It's, you've got to read the book. Okay. Uh, I don't know what it costs in the US. We've, oh, we've got members here from all around the world. You might even be able to get the ebook available free on the internet. But when we start to believe in this and read, if we can just take out one or two ideas, but then we've got things like here, Frogs and the Princesses, when it gets to NLP. Now, this is one of the very first books that come out by Richard Bandler and John Grindler. And uh, you've heard me talk a lot, or the existing members have heard me talk a lot about the technique where in their words, now this book was written in the 70s, where in their words, they had a woman who was a homosexual, they described her as, and she wanted to um, meet a man, uh, wanted to to marry a man, uh, but she was scared of the change. You know, I've got a concept where you, you imagine that person you want to become in front of you and you integrate them into your body by pulling them in. And here's this woman with her hands outstretched in front and Richard's on one side, John's on the other. And she says, I can't do it. I can't integrate it. I can't pull this person into me. And they forced it into her. And it just it's a really interesting story. Uh, but these techniques work. But guess what? You've got to be open-minded to the possibility. And you know, there's just hundreds now of books written on NLP. Now, for those members uh, that are really interested in NLP, if you go to the members area, you'll see there, this is only just really a drop in the ocean of books there and articles on NLP. <clears throat> okay, so there's already a ton of things there. I really recommend you have a look at those. Okay, so there's so much evidence there that we can change. So let's get into a couple of documents. And really, you, you, you're going to need to print these out to really do them. Let me just cover the philosophy on these uh, and a couple of things. Not, not, let me go from a, a, a top-down approach from what I've got here in the folder. So it may not be absolutely in that list. Now, first of all, you know how um, I traders I talk all the time about my to-do list? Most of you know I may seem very anal. And um, someone said to me, uh, I was actually a psychologist friend, friend of me, and he said, you know, you know, Ray, that when you tick something up on and you, you fill it out on your to-do list or you tick it off, you get in a shop, shot of uh, dopamine. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, dopamine uh, is known as the happy hormone, and it's responsible for, our, for us experiencing happiness. 
And when we um, tick something off, we accomplish something, our brain actually releases uh, a dose of dopamine and we feel good. Now, dopamine, of course, um, well, actually it's used for many things, blood flow, digestion, mood and emotions, lots of areas. So it's a neurotransmitter and it works with serotonin and adrenaline and, and things like that. And so it really makes sense because, uh, and chocolate does that. Yeah, that releases that um, uh, dopamine. And so food can, but many of you know, I use all of these checklists and the, and it really makes sense now when I look back on my to-do list each day, and for me, I've got to tick them off or circle them or whatever. It's a habit I've developed over many years. Now I really understand it. If I don't do it at the end of the day, I have a feeling of disappointment, a feeling down. It's because of the dopamine I now understand. So this document that I've uploaded one of the things we sometimes need to do is what may appear to be simple to some is very difficult to others or more challenging, is to break things down. How do we eat an elephant one bite at a time? How do we walk 100 miles? Well, one step at a time. You look ahead, you see the tree uh, 500 metres away and you walk to that tree. And uh, it's actually Kiara, my 17-year-old daughter, did the Kokoda Trail, a school um, uh, charity I think it was for charity on, on Saturday, and she was asked to fill in. She had to work, walk uh, 30 kilometres, and she walked just under 31 kilometres, but she hadn't been in training for it. Um, two of the team members um, fell out, um, uh, couldn't do it. And so what it meant was her school was going to be uh, disqualified. So Kiara stepped up to the plate and did it. And she said, Dad, I have it. She did it two years ago, but she trained for six months. So I said, honey, what you've got to do is I want you to look ahead because up and over mountains, by the way, it's up near Brisbane. Up, I live um, down near the beach here on the Gold Coast, but uh, up uh, in Brisbane, up in the mountains there. And I said, what you do, darling, you look ahead and you look at, say, a tree two or three hundred metres away and you focus on that one target. You get there, then you look for the next one. And this is something that the SEALs teach you, the Navy SEALs. This is one of the things you don't look at the 100 miles you've got to walk with the backpack. You look at the tree ahead or you look at the lamppost, whatever. You break it down, you chunk it down. Likewise, what you may choose to do is chunk your day down to maybe 30 minutes. And I found something the other day, and I'll be darned if I can find it again in one of my books here. There's a mad, I don't know where it comes from, a magic number of 28 minutes. But I have got this thing set up as 30 minutes. Now, you may do something where you set it down and even chunk it down further, 30 minute time blocks to get things done, but also with your trading. Okay? So you chunk things down to get things done. The next thing here is putting pen to paper. And now we're getting down to some techniques. Change means reinvention. This whole document, as I mentioned, has been up, uploaded. And something, oops, let's try to reduce that a little bit. Something magic happens, as you know, when we start to put things in writing. Now, I'll say this again, as I say it many times, is that always stand guard to the door to your mind. Always be cautious of a thief on the street that wants to steal your wallet or purse but be even more cautious of the person that wants to steal your dreams. Sometimes it can be those closest to us. So I want you to create a vision, but be very careful who you share that vision with. But this is an exercise where you truly need to sit down and do this, to imagine what you want. And if I think about what... And I'm just thinking of, uh, if we take it, John, sorry, I just grabbed a, a, one of his books, John Arasaf, um, he, he talks about that he started working many years ago for a very wealthy man who's wealthy in real estate. And um, uh, John was in a lot of trouble with the law when he was between 13 and 17, got himself in a lot of trouble. Uh, and this man who become his mentor uh, 
said, John, I want you to write out what your goals are. And he said, well, look, I want to be a millionaire. I want to have this, retire by the time I'm 40. So anyway, there were some steps he went through with John. Then he said, he gave him a job. He put him through real estate school and gave him a job as a real estate agent. And he said, I want you to have your goals in front of you now. He's got them in front and I want you to run your fingers over them. As you run your fingers over them, I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine those being true and coming true. And this reminds me of creating that vision that John talks about. And so it's so important that you do this if you're serious about it. Write about your reinvention. Surround yourself. Set up your dreams board, etc. Okay, um, most of you know, and a couple of you have been to my home here, you know what my office is like. There's literally, except for what you can see in the background here, um, uh, there's not really literally one foot of square space that's left. And I take the time to look around and, and read what I'm just doing it now, what's on my walls. It makes a difference. Now, for some of you, this won't resonate for you. Maybe you've got to have it in a folder. Some of you won't have the uh, available space to do it, etc. But it's so important you break this exercise down. But then every day, go back to that vision of yourself walking towards your future. Now, this is almost one of the, and I suppose it is in a way, it's future pacing. It's one of the NLP techniques we're going to be covering in great detail to a degree. But it's so important we put this in place and we actually start to do it. Now, I mentioned about that, or whether it is there, about that I've given you the link. You can download that for free on downloading the YouTube videos. Now, this is a technique that, um, I only come across, it's just another way of doing it that um, I come across when I was uh, in my sick bed <laughs> for the weekend. And I just thought, look, some of you might like this. Let's start here, work you draw a line down the middle of a notebook. On the left-hand uh, side of a page, write down what is absolutely no longer acceptable from this day moving forward. In other words, I want you to get, I'm going to swear, so pissed off with yourself. This is it. And this is what um, uh, one of the NLPs, uh, not John Grindler, Richard Bandler says, you've got to get so peeved with yourself. This is it. And you've got to think of every behavior or habit that you know or suspect is sabotaging your success. What are you doing that's stuffing you up? Write it down. Highlight it. On the right-hand side of a page, write down what is absolutely a must from this today, or this day, I should say, um, uh, this day. Let me just correct that so next time I upload it, moving forward. Think, really think of every behavior, every skill or habit that you need to develop to take your trading to a next level. Traders, I want you to imagine that you're working for a prop firm or you're doing their training course. If you knew that you were going to be earning a salary of a hundred to a million, hundred thousand to a, a million dollars a year, would you stuff around with this? Of course not. You'd be throwing yourself heart and soul into this. This is what it takes, because when we start to do that, it'll make a massive shift for you. Now, there's another version here, which in a way is perhaps going to be easier for you. But here's what it says here. Let's start here. And successful trading is about doing whatever it takes and dropping the excuses or blaming others where we are in our trading life. Something magical happens. I don't know whether anyone here has done Landmark Forum. Um, I did the forum, a number of forum courses many years ago. Forum is, it's got a lot of negative press. It's very, it's, is there anyone in the room, put your hand up if you've done the forum while any of the landmark courses, it's very, very confronting traders, just about the bullshit stories that we keep telling ourselves, and and it really is. And really, this is what it is. It really strips you back, let me tell you. And, you know, and blame is one of the things that we have. So who do you need to become to be one of, one of the best traders in the world? Now, trade. 
you can't be half pregnant with this. That is, you've got to become one of the best. Remember, we're trading. Our job is to take money out of another trader's bank account because they're hell on bent on taking your money out of your account. So it means you've got to be darn good. Now, fortunately for us, it's not what rocket science. It's pattern-based for most of us. And But you need to face what do you need to do? Who do you need to become? Now, what actions do I need to take on a daily basis to become one of the best traders in the world? Well, initially, practice my NLP every day. Now, I know my seasoned traders in the room have seen this, but for the newer members in the room, let me show you this. So what I have traders is I've got things that I do on a daily basis or nearly every day on boards, cork boards. And I've got special brackets made up. And so I've got a six screen set up here, but I've got my NLP and a whole lot of step-by-step things I do to fine my tooth, to fine tune what I need to do. Likewise, you can probably see over in the corner there, I think you can just see it, a number of my boards there with my trading rules, et cetera, that I have propped around um, my desk here as I trade. Now, for me, this is what works. I show it to you to just give you an idea or a technique. For an example, when we get to the NLP, there's a script, and I recommend you're standing in front of the computer when you're doing that. So if you've got the script next to the computer screen, it just makes it more real for you. But practicing your NLP, your affirmations, um, uh, you know, we're going to get to some of those very soon. So, and this may be something you update on a regular basis. But traders do it because something magic happens. The next one is, now, this is perhaps a little different for most of you. And it was actually Cam, um, is it, uh, where is it? So I'm just trying to pull this up. Why isn't this coming up? Here we are. I might just close that. It's not. I hear it is here. Now, this is something I use. I've just taken out a couple of personal things out of this, but I've left a lot of it here. Um, And uh, Cam from uh, the UK asked me three or four years ago to to show this. So I share that you don't have to go as far as this, and I've uploaded this for you. And this gets back to the dopamine shots that I have. I tick each one of these things off. And I don't, traders, I don't get them all done. For an example, no alcohol during the week. If I'm going out to a dinner, dinner during the week, etc. cetera, um, I take my blood pressure every three or four days. Um, uh, weight and fitness to me is now very important. I'm 61. Um, so this is what works for me. And I've got what I call my A to-do list and my B and my C. For an example, clear items off desktop. I get so many things sent to me, uh, I can get really clog up my screens. So this was what works for me. But it's one of those daily to-do lists. What is yours? Next one is the daily report card. There's two different versions that we've got here. This is a nice one that's been sent out. And I can't remember who who's did that for us. It might have been Denzel or one of our members. Now, if you went to work for SMB Capital on many prop firms now, is that they talk about you must have this daily report card. If you aim at nothing, you'll hit with great accuracy every single time. You can't improve it if you don't measure it. Now, unfortunately, most of you I know won't do this. And let me just pull up the other version, which for me is a little easier. Um, For those traders that are really serious, this really gets back to, I'll tell you what, when you start to jot things down, something magical happens. Uh, And this is a report, even if you only trade one hour a day, you develop the habit. You know, tiny habits lead to big habits. Um, Tiny changes, remarkable results. Now, Down here, just one thing on this. You may notice here I've got what's my one major goal for the month. I'm very much about having multiple goals, but one thing I learned from Mike Balafore from SMB Capital was with his traders, he teaches his traders to set up and have one major goal a month. You hit that, you handle that, then you can set another one. So you're not, you know, if it really gets back to that one thing, Okay, what's that one thing that will make a difference? 
So if you want to follow Mike, Mike Balafore, that's what he's, that's why I've got there one. What are my thoughts feeling? Did I follow my trading plan? Now, if you don't, watch your self language. What can I learn from that? Why didn't I follow my trading plan? What's the reason for that? Um, uh, was I because of greed? Was it fear? Um, was I revenge trading? Let's look at the reasons why you didn't follow that or why you broke your trading rules. But be constructive traders. Stop slapping yourself around and I'm a bloody idiot and F me and, and whatever because it, it, it makes a massive difference to you. You've got to change the questions that you ask. Like over here, what will I no longer do? Well, I'm no longer going to revenge trade. This is it. All right now, what if you do it tomorrow? You put it down again and you keep working on that. All right, and there are things we can do to collapse those anchors and stop us from doing that. But what will I do differently tomorrow? Start doing this, and I promise you, things will change. But we've got to change too. The next one here is. And I pretty much, um, uh, this is something that Tony Robbins says, and many of you know I'm a big fan of Tony, and and there's a lot of reasons why in the background, which I won't go into today. But with um, uh, Tony, his number one thing he says to you, if you want to change, you've got to raise your standards. Now, let me just expand that a little bit. Uh, if you just um, expand this a bit. Now, I actually typed this up only this morning because, you know, initially I thought, what does raise your standards actually mean? And this is what it means. You know, why do we, um, why do, we do it? How do we successfully do it? To me, raising standards is about taking whatever you do and making it even better in every way possible than it has been before. It means understanding what your current standards or expectations of quality are, deciding what you want them to be, what, what you want them to be instead. In order to raise your standards, the first step would be to ask the fundamental questions. What are your standards now? Well, oh, they're pretty shitty actually, because I'm not checking red flag news every day. Uh, I'm not reviewing my trading plan. I'm not doing this. I'm not, not doing that. You know what? That's great. It's giving you a starting point. Now, the next thing is, um, you know, where do they need to be to achieve all that you desire? Now, as we know, we don't get what we want. We get who we are. So to get all that we desire, we need to change. So where do my standards need to be? Well, I need to stop this BS trading, this stupid trading, this impulse trading. I need to get off and actually stop live trading. Uh, until I get this right. It means stepping up to the plate and making a massive change. And we may need to ask ourselves, what are the ways I can raise my standards here? Read By taking that hour of power every day. And for new members in the room, an hour, the hour of power is what I call where you're listening to motivational stuff, head stuff. And I'm not talking about you know, jump out of seat, rah-rah, but listening to the psychology of trading. Um, Mark Douglas videos, which I'll show you some links when we get to them today, et cetera, et cetera. Raising standards about deciding that you're going to be more, you're going to do more, impact more. It's one of the most, and I need to check, is that right? I'll quickly put this together this morning, about deciding that you're going to be uh, to be more, do more, impact more. It's one of the most fulfilling things you can ever do. But this is one of the most important things that you can do. Uh, yes, that has been. Um, uh, so, RB, are you a, a member of the Day Traders Fast Track program? If not, I've got to set up a separate folder. My staff will let you know how to get to it. Um, I just had the question, where do I download these worksheets from? Are you actually a member? Because if you are a member, they're in on my Google Drive in a folder called the Disciplined Trader webinar. So if not, um, uh, we'll be emailing the link out with directions to everyone else. Now, the next one is, what are my um, uh, daily non-negotiables? Another document. Okay, now, this also can relate back to our fitness, our diet. 
all of these things have a massive effect where we are. Um, my self-talk. You know, so what are the things that you're no longer willing to do? What are the things that you have to do or must do on a daily basis? Jot them out. Another one here is, my time has come. Another way of putting it, who do I need to become? What are your greatest challenges in achieving these things? What steps, actions will I put in place or undertake on a daily basis? The more, the, the more different ways that we tackle this, traders, the better. All right, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. It's so important we approach it and look at it from different angles. And the last one here in this folder is, is really about the thank you, living a life of gratitude. I promise you, and I know some of you are very much into this, it will make them, it's, you know what, it's a paradigm shift. Um, now, we know that a paradigm is a set of rules. It's about changing the rules and shifting. But I can say for 99% of you, you start to say your thank yous, and, and it doesn't mean you've got to be religious, but thank you, just have gratitude, things will change. So back to our PowerPoint. So we look at all of these things here. So they're all in that document there, um, pen to paper document. So we've spoken about uh, raise your standards. We've already gone through that handout. Let's talk about the power of questions. Now, I've got a little PowerPoint here. And actually, what I'll probably do is, uh, is let you have this PowerPoint as well. And everything we do in life traders is based around questions. And, and I've got to tell you now, this is probably going to be uh, one of the most important sections or, or, or subjects we can actually go through. Because really questions provide the answers to everything. Is the light red or is it green? Do we go? Do we stop? Um, how do I do this? You know, we, we're, we're continually asking ourselves questions about different things in our lives. You know, now, there's two types of questions that really can have a massive effect on us traders. There's what we call empowering questions and there's disempowering. So the victim, the disempowering, why has this always happened to me? Because you're an idiot. No, seriously, your brain, the questions that we ask, it'll give us the question, why has this always happened to me? Oh, because, I, you know, it's just my bad luck, whatever. On the other hand, we can ask what we call an empowering questions. You know, what can I learn from this? We have a losing trade. Uh, we make a mistake, maybe. What can I learn from this? How can I use this? What's great about this? It's a little bit, like, you know, it's just, it's empowering. And if we look at our whole life is based around questions. Now, so many traders focus on why it won't work uh, or why it can't be done and wonder why they don't achieve their goals. Once again, it doesn't mean you don't go and verify things. But if something's not working for you, ask, what can I learn from this? Uh, for an example, if we're trading, do we need to change the time frame or the market? Uh, do we need to get back just to that one or two setups, the 34 Bs and the two Bs? All of these things make a massive difference. The first question we've got to ask ourselves, who do I need to become to achieve all that I desire as a day trader? Now, in this PowerPoint, I'm not going to go through every one of these. There's so many different questions here, but your brain can handle any question, and it really is. When we ask ourselves a question, we get the answer, and it's not always the answer we want. So thinking is nothing but the process of asking and answering questions. So if we want to change the quality of our lives, we should change our habitual questions. These questions direct our focus and therefore how we think and how we feel. You know, a lot of things, it's about reframing. For an example, and just getting back to, and, and no, I'm not whinging anymore. That means complaining in Australia, by the way, when you say whinging. I'm not sure if the same in the US is that um, about getting this COVID jab and not feeling well. I can reframe that and say, well, what, you know, what can I learn from this? What I can learn from it, I should be grateful. Um, uh, 
yeah, it, it's just it's about reframing and asking ourselves the right questions. Maybe that's not a great example, but with our trading, how can I turn this around? Right, and you and you write it down, traders. Now there's so many different questions. Like when it comes to live trading, do I have angulation? It's a question. Do I have um, three mounts? That that basically means three ways or three legs up um, or down. Do I have a, a double top bottom? Do I have a pivot bounce? Am I major resistance? Notice this, traders. It's all about questions. Everything we do. Now the challenge is that a lot of the questions we ask are disempowering. So it's so important that we be asking ourselves the right questions. What can I learn from this? How can I use this? What can I do differently next time? What's the presupposition of these questions? The presupposition is that you can do better. What can I learn from this? Well, not to do that again. I just learned something. It's the presupposition. Now, yes, this document has been uploaded, and I think I think I closed it just a minute ago, but um, we've got here this one, empowering questions to ask. So it is there for you, but let's just have a look at on the slides. When we come to our losing trades, and yes, you print these out, um, uh, what's not perfect yet? What's the presupposition of that question? I can make it perfect. How can I improve my entry? What's the presupposition? I can improve it. How can I improve my exit? What did I learn from this trade? Presupposition? I can learn. What will I do differently next time? How can I better qualify the trade? What do I need to learn or do so it won't happen again? What have I learned today? These are the questions that we need to start to ask. When we come to our winning trades here, what did I learn from this? Once again, we can learn from our winning trades and our losing trades equally. What did I learn from this trade? What's great about this? And even some of our winning trades, we maybe shouldn't have even entered that trade or taken that trade. How can I improve my entry, my exit, the same things? How can I improve my next trade? So, uh, if I got that uh, here, the pair of questions, I'm just uh, looking here. Maybe I haven't, but so I'm just going to quickly, whoops, just come back to that. Now, have I got them here? Oh, okay, so Tony, it's the next slide here. So Tony Robbins has got six, uh, he calls them uh, the six questions for problem solving in business. What can I learn from this? We ask this. What's great about this problem? Now, Talk about um, uh, presupposition. What's great about this problem? Well, you know, unlike a lot of people, I'm before the screens, I have this opportunity. All right, what's not perfect? What am I willing to do to make it the way I want it? When it comes to your trading or yourself, what am I willing to do to succeed at trading? What am I willing not to do to make it the way I want it? How can I enjoy the process? Now, these questions must be asked in a great state. Now, what do I mean by that? When we trade, uh, we need to be in what we call a peak state. Now, most of you know I have a standing desk here. So as I'm talking to you here, I'm standing, which allows me to use my physiology, which makes a massive difference to my trading, massive difference in getting work done because it's empowering. I can, I've got my shoulders back, et cetera. I can move. It's easy to walk away, et cetera. So to get in a great state, sometimes you need to get out of your chair. Now, who was it the other day? One of our members told me they've been getting up and walking out the room. Oh, and I, and actually, I didn't get them to actually tell me. Dopamine again, Robert. Um, so one of our members, uh, I was, I can't remember if it was by email or I was talking to them, how now they get up and walk out of the room and that's made a massive difference to their trading, a massive difference. Maybe that's something that you need to do, traders. Now, Morning power questions for those that are really open-minded and about living a life of gratitude. What am I happy about in my life right now? What am I excited about? Well, you should be damn well excited, traders, about your trading. This is financial freedom for life. What else can you get going for under two or three thousand dollars 
and live the life of your dreams. There's hardly anything out there. You can do that with this. What am I proud about? Well, you know what? I might have stuffed up to now, but at last I'm taking steps to rectify it. I'm leaving my past behind me and learning from it. What am I grateful for about? Well, I'm grateful I've got this opportunity. So it's can you see these reframes? And there's just another document there I've got just on a whole range of different questions that you can be using. But the last question I want to ask you, and I want you to write this down, what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? Let me ask you that again. What would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? You see, I want you to think about the logic of trading. Uh, now, just say if you trade the 2B only, just the 2B, that's all you traded, 80% plus plus win-loss ratio, and you followed your money management rules, and you took maybe the only ones you didn't take are maybe the 2BDs, but you took every one. You're set for life. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to become a 100-contract trader because we all have different personalities and risk profiles and age, and, and some of us don't need to be trading 100 lots. But for the young guns in the room, maybe you do. But what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? I think it's a great question for us to be asking ourselves. Okay, so... Um, so we've already spoken pretty much about the presupposition here of these questions. And this is in this questions PowerPoint traders. It can be improved. I'll upload this for you as well. Um, you just might like to, to have that. But it's really true. We've got to look at the way we think and the questions that we ask. So what we're going to do in a moment, I think um, we, I'm going to uh, wrap this session up. Um, if this is oh, And this is one question I do want to finish off on. And we might even, I just want to show you a couple of things, but we will finish for today because we're getting to Mark Douglas and it'll take us a good hour and a half to go through that. But I want to ask you this one. Now, imagine you apply, now I want you to really think about this. Imagine you applied yourself 110% to mastering the art of day trading. Fast forward six months. Imagine now you failed. Why did you fail? You spent six months, you've applied yourself. Why did you fail? What are the reasons that may have stopped you from succeeding as a trader? Now, what are we going to do about this? So I want you to think about that question. And I want you to, to really forward step and look at yourself in six months. Well, shit, my lack of discipline is, is really, that's going to be the damn thing that holds me back. Or maybe it's um, uh, uh, poor money management or, or taking impulse trades. Great, because we can do something about that traders. I want you to jot it out. Why did you fail? If it's five reasons, write it down. Because we can work on those challenges. Okay, now just as we finish off today, I'm going to finish there because we could spend a, a, a lot of time. Um, let me actually just do the I am's because this is something you can start to apply um, straight away and in between the next session. What are the two most powerful words in the English language? Traders, I am. I am powerful, I am strong, I am successful, I am achiever, I'm a fighter, I'm more than enough, I'm a winner. I am can be extremely powerful. Now, what I've done is uploaded this here, and I've actually found a video uh, on YouTube, and I had one of my staff transcribe it for me. And it's excellent. And there's a couple of different versions of it. And I've even found here um, uh, a couple of, and if you, there's a, whoops, I, I could hear the audio. You probably couldn't hear it then. But there's on YouTube and, uh, and some great 
um, uh, videos here on I am as well. Because when we start to use those, they shape our lives. They're in affirmations. I am rich. I'm determined. I am focused. I am wise. I'm capable of anything. You've got to say them with passion. You've got to say them like you mean it. This is a habit trait. It's developing this thing that is to put this in place is a habit, by the way. Our whole life revolves around habits. But I really want to encourage you between now and our next session in two weeks' time that you start to you, you put your pen to paper. You start to ask yourself the right questions. You start to look at your I am's. Now, last of all, as we do finish, I just want to bring this up and show you this. Now, I know the seasoned traders, um, you've seen these and you know I do all of this. Um, just let me get one thing. Now, I, I just want to encourage you Look, I show you these things to give you ideas. You don't have to do them. It may not work or resonate with you, and some of you will want things on the computer. But I mentioned to you, I started to put together things just for this session. Okay, so I've got goal setting, the 1% process, some trading articles, the one thing. Um, I've got four big folders there on Mark Douglas alone. And what I've even done is I've taken Mark Douglas's videos and I've even had my staff transcribe his videos. Is that cool? I did that a number of years ago and noticed that they're tabbed. Now, maybe I should ask, who would like a copy or, or the script to some of his videos I've had done? I'm just seeing on the screen here whether some say yes. <clears throat> uh, so we've got to see, okay, yes, now I'm getting a yes. I'll get a uh, Tom. Tom Huey. Uh, so what I've done is I've had transcribed. I haven't done them all. I've done, I think, oh, gee, which one's video? One? So I think I've done four or five of them. I've actually had transcribed. So what I'll do, I'll put them in the folder for you. But the point here is, traders, um, is anyone perhaps giving, getting the idea that I take this friggin' seriously? <laughs> okay. I truly do. Now, I just want to show you this then. So what I want to encourage you to do is to open up like affirmations and visualization. Now you might mightn't go as far as what I do and, and do big folders and fill them out and uh, but on NLP and okay, notice they're tabbed and you know uh, we then get then my life plan and my vision for the future. Okay, that's I've got everything organized now. Some of you, unfortunately, will say, <clears throat> oh, he's just been a smart ass or showing off, but I'm not. I just want to share with you ideas that make a difference. Just like with your books, you know, tab them, highlight them. That's what they're there for. With Discipline Trader and all of those, it will make a difference because in many ways, the setups are fairly basic to learn. They're patterns, the 34B, the 2B. Yes, I know you've got to learn angulation and a lot of the other setups, but what stops us ultimately? Okay, it's uh, lack of discipline, uh, patience, not understanding and believing in probabilities. A lot of this stuff is head stuff. Let's get on top of it and take your trading to the next level. You can do this. But what it means is you've got to apply yourself. Even Trader Vic, who you hear me talk about, uh, Trader Vic, who wrote this book um, uh, back in 1991, one third of a book or maybe 20% of a book at the end, do you know what it talks about? NLP, Neurolinguistics, and how we applied it to trading. What are we going to be talking about in our next session? NLP and how we apply it to our trading. Why? And this is from years ago. Because it works. So traders, we will finish up. Uh, just the one thing as a reminder that we do have our next coaching class starting tomorrow. So if you'd like to uh, join us as far as learning the actual techniques on, on trading, etc., come and join us in our coaching class. This link will go out later today. Uh, and um, uh, if you wish to join us, come along. Uh, now, so with those scripts, lots of members are saying yes, yes. I'll upload those. Uh, yeah, see you tomorrow, David. Uh, what I'll do, 
I'll actually upload those today for you, later on today. Okay, oh, Mark, you're welcome, mate. You're welcome. Mark just said it's going to be a great series. So I don't know how many we'll have. We only got through just a portion, but we'll do them, every, as I said, every second week. So thank you very much, traders. Uh, for my coaching members, see you all in class tomorrow. Thank you. See you in the next session.